Members of Parliament, Governors, Cabinet Secretary, Your Excellency, uh, you and I, and I think the Honorable Musalem Davandi will recall that the last prayer breakfast of last year uh, was a bit uh, interesting in that uh, today we talk about reconciliation but uh, during the last prayer breakfast uh, of last year it was very difficult this morning I join you with rejoicing thanksgiving faithful supplication and prayer in my heart I praise the almighty God of all creation whose supremacy we the people of Kenya solemnly and humbly acknowledge even at the moment of constituting our sovereign republic and to whom we submit our aspirations in prayer every time we sing our national anthem. Kenya has emerged triumphant and sovereign out of the sorrowful mist of painful history because those who came before us endured harrowing sacrifice with heroic determination and faith in, co in God and in our Creator. The history of Kenya, therefore, is an ample chronicle of consistent struggle, unshakable determination, unity, and devout prayer. Prayer is not just an exemplary component of our heritage and a magnificent tradition. Prayer anchors our aspirations and devotion to God. The most important instruments and symbols of our republic constantly remind us to be reconciled with the almighty God, our creator. I thank the conveners of this national prayer breakfast, our good members of parliament, for bringing us together as leaders to rally the nation in its splendid diversity of creed and faith, to unite in submission to God, and to take our dearest wishes, deepest needs, and foremost desires before the majestic throne of our benevolent creator. We kneel before God, praying for justice, our shield and defender, so that our nation can stand before any difficulty, any adversity, threat, or trial. There is no better time for us to pray as a nation than now. We have an opportunity to give thanks for the far we have come as a country amid global turmoil arising from pandemic, geopolitical crisis, economic shocks, as well as regional conflict, harrowing drought, a plague of locusts, and a closely contested election. I am truly grateful to God that in this, our first prayer breakfast, we have come together as a nation. And it is perfectly in order for us to celebrate where we are today as a country. Let me first congratulate all elected leaders who are here on this first prayer breakfast. Congratulations to all of you who have been given the opportunity to serve the people of Kenya, all of us, from our MCAs, to our members of parliament, to our governors, and all of us in between. We, we want to thank God for the opportunity to serve the people of Kenya. And I want to congratulate you and to tell you 
that um, I am looking forward to working with each and every one of you, working together across political lines on matters that are important to the people of Kenya. And in that working together, it is not necessary that we will always agree, but it is important that we work together towards the betterment of our country. Globally, nations are growing under high cost of living, intensified by soaring debt, food scarcity, unemployment, and of course, struggling economies. We are giving our best in the struggle to overcome these immense challenges. Firstly, our robust endeavors to implement a radical socioeconomic transformation is intended to provide sustainable solutions to our cost of living, food security, scarcity, unemployment, and poverty challenges. Secondly, we have historically and even now stand ready to lend our hand to our neighbors and regional brothers and sisters experiencing conflict and instability and take a stand for peace, security, and development in not just our neighborhood, but across the globe. Further, we join the global community in combating existential threats to humanity in the form of conflict, terrorism, poverty, exclusion, and of course the triple planetary crisis of pollution, loss of diversity, and climate change. In all this and other endeavors, we must also invoke our collective faith as a nation and congregate before the throne of mercy and seat of grace in order that our effort may be blessed with success and that our unity, cohesion, and solidarity be elevated to a divine communion, solemn fellowship, and sacred fraternity of all our people. Colossians 3.13 remind us to bear with each other and to forgive one another. On this day of prayer, I call your attention to the important need for a shared understanding of all the causes we hold dear and are willing to defend. Without this understanding, we end up fighting each other instead of fighting for our causes. Without this understanding, we end up divided when we should be united. I want to remind all of us leaders about the expectations that the people of Kenya have, that we love our country dearly and will do our part individually and collectively to make Kenya work and succeed in promoting the well-being, the dignity, and the liberty of all our people. We are expected to be united by the vision of a strong, secure, prosperous Kenya, where our people live in prosperity, freedom, and happiness. These are proper and legitimate expectations. I will go further and propose that although our ideas concerning the means, strategies, and policies of achieving this vision may differ, we must remain cognizant of a line no one should ever cross, of wishing that this nation fails or that her people suffer, just to vindicate our politics. Neither can we pursue an agenda of sabotage for political advantage. Your Excellency, uh, you and I, and I think the Honorable Musalem Davandi will recall that the last prayer breakfast of last year uh, was a bit uh, interesting in that uh, today we talk about reconciliation. But uh, during the last prayer breakfast uh, of last year, it was very difficult to sit together on that table because uh, 
we were indeed just pretending to be talking to each other. You recall, and indeed, congratulations because uh, you, you withstood it. I think this year's theme is one that uh, we all of us as uh, Kenyan leaders, and indeed as a nation, should observe.